Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to a new episode on Aquaculture Tribe. As you remember that in uh, one of the previous videos, I discussed about uh, how you design the fish feed experiment and how you test the ingredients. And I'm very happy that I have started to get the emails and uh, questions related to that. I'm very glad and I just answered one right away. Um, and this, this specific uh, presentation, this is about the FCR. Uh, I see there is a lot of misconception about this concept to, to measure the fish performance. Whenever you feed the fish, whenever you make even your own feed or when it's commercial feed, it's two different things. And in the commercial feed, you often uh, can get very good FCR. Very good FCR means you give the fish uh, more, uh, less feed and, and also gain more weight. So, so, but when it, you are trying by yourself journally or you are uh, using more of the local ingredients, then the results could be sometime disappointing. And then you might get the, the FCR, which is, you may think that is you are giving fish like four kilograms of feed and fish is only getting one kilogram of uh, the weight gain. So that could be, you, you might be thinking sometime. So this is all about this concept about FCR, uh, which is commonly called feed conversion ratio. The FCR is short for feed conversion ratio. So before I start this presentation, I have another announcement, and that is that uh, this Thursday on 26th, uh, 26th, I am uh, going for a live stream on YouTube where you can uh, ask your questions. So you please prepare your questions, and this is the time. It will be at 3 p.m. in Europe, 2 p.m. in Africa, and 6.30 p.m. in India. And for the people who are in Australia or New Zealand or uh, US or other places where the time zone is not the same. So I will try to make another arrangement for that later on. But anyway, the recording will be available and you guys can start even sending the questions. I will leave the e my email in the comment section. So hope to see you all there, uh, at least who can manage. and. There will be recording, so you guys can also listen to the recording later and reach me the way you do reach me out on the email. So let's uh, jump back into this uh, FCR. Uh, so how do we calculate this FCR? Uh, the FCR is uh, calculated as such. So you have the amount of feed consumed and you also see uh, take the value for weight gain. So let's say, uh, in a very simplistic common terms, very common for the fish. Like we, we think that the fish is very best performance in doing very best performance. If it, we give it one kilogram of feed and then it gains one kilogram of weight. So that is considered very best FCR or this is the way you calculate it. So you check the feed and you check the, uh, the weight gain. So in this example, you can see that. Uh, and uh, if, for example, the fish has uh, eaten two kilogram of fish feed and then only have given you one kilogram of weight, so that it will be like FCR is two. So similarly, FCR could be three. Uh, if it's three kilogram of uh, fish feed for one kilogram of weight, uh, it could be uh, like 1.5. Um, if it's three kilogram of fish feed and the weight gain is 1.5. Uh, so then it's uh, it, this, you, you probably got the idea. Now I'm going to walk you through, uh, I, I think I'm too fast, but uh, you can listen it again. But uh, let's move to the next slide. And in this, you see, that you have the range of different species, uh, but there is another important uh, aspect you see here, it's based on this optimum diet. Optimum feed is like based on exactly how much fish need the protein, how much fat it need, how much uh, other ingredient, uh, how much other nutrients it needs. So based on a very good optimum composition, 
So these are the numbers or the ranges. So salmonides, they are traditionally, uh, they are really good at uh, converting these ingredients um, into, into their flesh and they are really good at it. So their FCR is uh, like one uh, to 1.2. Uh, this is for salmon and trout um, generally. And then you have, we are talking about omnivore fish. Omnivorous fish is like, which can eat both plant and animal protein. So here you see the Nile tilapia example suits very well. So tilapia example is very good because uh, tilapia is very flexible. Um, and, and you can see that it, the, the, the FCR could be ranging from 1.4 to 1.8, uh, but uh, tilapia even can go uh, same as salmon. It, it could be 1.111. I have uh, experience where I produce tilapia based on only one FCR. Uh, in this thing. But that is, of course, the conditions were different. The conditions were lab conditions, not the normal conditions. Normal conditions are much more stressful and harsh for the fish. So similarly, you have uh, shrimps. Shrimps are uh, normally because, uh, I, I will tell later, the nutrient density thing. But uh, shrimp, uh, the, the, it's uh, FCR is very similar to the broiler chicken. So it ranges from 1.6 to two kilogram. That is about the shrimp. And uh, let's move to the next, uh, but the very important point here is that you have to consider that this is optimum diet when the diet was perfectly designed for the fish uh, nutrient requirements. Uh, it was uh, uh, the reason that's why you get this type of very good numbers here. And uh, then we go further. So you have to consider different things. Uh, the most important thing you have to consider is the nutrient density. Uh, nutrient density is an extremely important concept. For example, if you are giving the, just in a simplistic terms, if you are giving the fish, let's say you're giving the tilapia, very high content of uh, proteins in your fish feed ingredients. And then you have uh, perfectly well uh, calculated uh, carbohydrates. Uh, you, you are not using so much, let's say fiber, you are not using so much uh, ingredients which don't account for the protein and also for uh, the carbohydrates and fats. So it's generally carbo a carbohydrate rich ingredient which have like you can say poor density. So in this type of scenario, um, your FCR will be, uh, let's say if you are adding too much carbohydrates, then your FCR, when you will actually calculate the feed, basically the amount of feed, so amount of feed can go up to like four kilos and you still get like 1.5 kilogram of fish or maybe uh, like one kilogram in some cases. So you can start to think about this uh, common misconception and this uh, misperception that your FCR is, is very, let's say, uh, high and it's poor performance. But, in but you have to understand what you are uh, comparing it with. Of course, if you are just comparing it with a very solid, like a uh, commercial feed where everything is based on this uh, uh, nutrient density uh, journally. So in this scenario, of course, your FCR will be higher compared to the commercial diet. But you have to see uh, the flexibility you are having when you are using your own ingredients, uh, the local ingredients, the ingredients which are readily available to you. So another thing is that the the recipes in the commercial feed uh, diets, they are extremely complex to, uh, to change like uh, in a week or, uh, so these formulations are set up for a longer period of time. The, the contracts for, with the ingredients are for longer period of time. But if you are operating at a medium level, you don't really need to worry about this. If you have this knowledge, understanding, 
that how do you change the variety of ingredients based on the market conditions, you can uh, eventually uh, be at a very good position. So, and, and then there is another thing, and that is to do with the overfeeding. So uh, overfeeding is still one of the big issue in uh, animal production, animal farming, uh, especially in uh, aquaculture. So people do overfeed all the time to the fish. But as a rule of thumb, I would say uh, you, you, you observe the fish. You, are, you don't really need to always rely on these charts which you get from the feed mill or from your uh, uh, medicine supplier or other suppliers that this is the chart. You start from the chart, but you adjust to your local conditions. Sometime, if you just follow the chart, you keep overfeeding the feed, and then uh, the feed will settle down uh, in your uh, in the water in the pond or in the tank. It will give very bad water quality, which will increase the stress towards the fish, and which eventually. Uh, give the poor health to the fish and uh, it wouldn't grow. And on the other hand, it will give you a huge misconception uh, when it comes to the FCR because you think that the you have offered the fish uh, feed based on this chart or based on your idea and then fish has not been, uh, you think it has ate it but you haven't really checked so it didn't really ate so then it add this number uh, into this and give the high uh, FCR value. As a rule of thumb, uh, you should be very good at observing your uh, fish uh, on the daily basis that how much feed you have given and how much have been left over. You have to find the way how to see that. And then because it's different from uh, tanks to ponds and to cages. So then, and I would say as a rule of thumb, never overfeed uh, your fish in case you want to, to be more uh, um, confirmed. You, you want to be confirmed about this thing that you have to, to be sure that fish is not hungry and it grows, then never exceed more than 10% of the, your feeding quota, never exceed that. But unfortunately, as we see what is really happening, people are giving up to 30%, up to 40% more feed to the fish uh, compared to what fish actually needs. So of course the things are improving, people are installing the cameras and all that to, to monitor this uh, feeding. But uh, still, unfortunately, this is really the thing and you have to uh, consider improving. And uh, yeah, so this was also the point about how you feed the fish. So uh, this is uh, overall uh, for FCR, but FCR is not only the one parameter when you want to consider. So there are other things as well. Uh, protein retention is an extremely important parameter to understand and then its uh, feed factor is uh, one of uh, the popular uh, way to check the performance and growth rate and others uh, like specific growth rate, for example, and could be a few others. So this is like, I will, I will continue uh, to, to present this uh, in the presentation format. I feel really happy about this. Uh, I see the effect is very good and, uh, but please keep sending me the question and answers. Uh, this is it for today. Uh, in another video, we will go further into these concepts. But for Thursday, uh, remember to show up. Uh, we will have uh, this live session. Then I can answer your questions or you can send me in advance and then we can continue from there. This is kind of the experimental thing for me. I'm trying to improve, trying to do more things, try to contribute to you uh, more. So let's, uh, let's stay in touch. And uh, thank you very much. And now I'm going to close this uh, session. And uh, thank you.